you know, when we think about outcomes, we should be expanding our definition of what we expect from a pharmaceutical coupled with uh, digital health solutions and likewise from a med tech uh, device, expand out and actually start to put an expectation on the market that we deliver quality of life, patient experience, in addition to kind of traditional healthcare healthcare. Hello and welcome to another episode in the Transatlantic Biotech series with Cranmore Executive Search. This interview series has been put together with the vision of tapping into the strong connections that exist in the biotech communities between Ireland and the US. My name is Sean Carter. I'm the co-founder and managing partner of Cranmore Executive Search. And today's guest is Dr. Brian Flatley. Uh, Brian is a digital health leader and a VP for consulting services and US pharma client solutions at S3 Connected Health and another rare disease warrior, having co-founded the Rare Disease Nurse Network, a charity that aims to improve the care and outcomes of the rare disease patients. Uh, thank you for joining me today, Brian. Thanks very much for having me, Sean. Uh, Brian, I, I suppose a great way of kicking things off um, and a, an easy kind of in, I suppose, is um, can you tell me a little bit about your professional journey? Um, so from Mayo to Boston and, and everything in between? Yeah, no problem. Um, so. I think my background is, is, is science-based. I've always had a strong interest in science and maths. So, you know, when I was picking, picking a career choice, there was always a strong leaning towards a science-based degree. Um, at the time, uh, several years ago, it was an article in the national paper that at the time forensic science was quite in vogue and that influenced me coupled with CSI to look at a course that was less pure science-based and, and had some application. In a way, I'm glad because it exposed me at the end of that course to make choices that were wider than just purely a science degree as well. So um, it, it you know, was better analysis, crime scene investigation, expert witness training aren't part of my everyday work today, but it does give me appreciation for the application of science to different areas as well. Uh, went on to do a PhD, um, largely driven by my interest in you know, analytical chemistry, instrumentation and oncology at the time. And it was a nice intersection there where we explored developing diagnostics in oncology for improved treatment decision-making. And, and likewise, the postdoc uh, was a similar vein. I suppose the kind of inflection point came at the end of my postdoc where I had been exposed more to the commercialization of science and that startup entrepreneurship kind, kind of, uh, I suppose, area. And that's what piqued my interest. And so I started to explore careers and, and opportunities outside of academia and I bumped into uh, Health Excel, uh, one of the founders at the time. And I didn't know quite honestly a lot about digital health, uh, but I was very intrigued by, you know, the type of conversation we had is how can how can mobile health as mobile, mobile applications or connected add-ons to uh, to inhalers make a difference to patients. Um, and so from there, that began my interest and career in, in digital health, uh, where I've been working for close on 10 years now. Okay, so so what, what, do, you, what do you enjoy most about the space then, Brian? Initially, the attraction was the speed at which you could potentially make a difference to patient lives. So coming from, you know, traditional diagnostics where the path from, you know, discovery to validation to market just seemed quite long. Yeah, that was my naive view. The realization today, if I reflect on digital health, is that path needs to be something similar in the rigor and the approach to the market development. But I think what excited me at the time and still does is, you know, the scale then at which you can impact people's lives and healthcare outcomes. Um, and so I still find that very interesting. I'm still, you know, enthusiastic when I find a new, a new startup company or a new piece of innovation that can actually be slotted into care pathways or change care pathways and, and really make a difference and, you know, change how, how people can experience healthcare regardless of the country, the health system that it is as well. Brilliant. Okay. But it, it, it's, it's, it's great to sit down with an expert, um, in, in the digital health space, um, Brian, um, you know, the, the innovations in, in, in digital health and, and connected medical devices are revolutionizing um, healthcare. Um, S3 are obviously at the, the forefront of leading the charge. Uh, Brian, you're coming up to almost eight years with S3 Connected. I'm sure your elevator pitch is, um, is, is on point um, by now. Uh, so who are S3 and why are you, why are you guys so great? I hope. The marketing team is giving me a better pitch is okay. But S3 Connected Health is today a trusted digital health partner to the life science clients. You know, we really are focused on bringing over 20 years of experience of designing, developing, and operating digital health services to our clients. You know, we serve more than 30 industry clients today, medtech and pharma. And our success isn't an overnight success or built on adopting buzzword kind of bingo. You know, we're really yeah. focused on long-term value delivering roles to our clients. 
And maintaining those relationships spanning 10, 15 years is, is really testament to that commitment. Um, to give you one example, you know, just last week there was, uh, I think it was a national hearing, hearing aid day or hearing loss day. And somebody posted about work, you know, the, the, the impact that a cochlear implant had on a family member. And, you know, we've worked with cochlear for several years now, and it, it brought a sense of pride to me that, you know, while we don't, we're not always touching the end user, you know, we can have that type of impact and look at different products on the market today and say, you know, we, we, we contributed to part of that success. And, and that's really important as well to us as a company to know that we're driving, you know, improvement in experiences and outcomes. So that that's kind of where I suppose the sweet spot for us is or the value we bring is long-term commitment to changing healthcare outcomes and, and in doing so being a trusted partner for our clients. Yeah, yeah. I, I know sometimes you can feel a little bit removed. It's a services business, um, but you know, when you have a, uh, you know, uh, you, you can actually see the outcomes, uh, you know, play, you know, that's, that's pretty rewarding, I'm sure. Um, so the, the U.S. Uh, moved to the U.S. You're there almost a year now. Um, you know, how did that come about and, and how, thing, how are things uh, going with regards to the U.S. expansion? So the, the move to the U.S. really was, I suppose, in line with the, the market trends where our clients were more and more looking at the U.S. healthcare system, the U.S. market as their first launch or where they were really kind of focused on setting up their innovation teams as the as the market of choice. So for us, a large proportion of our business had already started to transition across the U.S. And so coupled with that is how do we start to build, you know, a global business with a local presence, essentially, um, and, you know, S3 Connected Health has already served and delivered solutions across more than 50 markets, but the U.S. is becoming more and more important, obviously, as, as some place that we need to have a base. So when we looked across and if the opportunities and said, you know what, it's a good time to, to start to move somebody from Dublin across. Um, I had felt my time in Dublin had come to an end in any case, not necessarily at S3, but more as, as a city. And I was I was looking for an opportunity to to move someplace new. So there was a good fit from that perspective. Boston is a fantastic place for, for me and for an Irish person to come and set up in the US if you're looking for uh, a kind of an American light experience with a large European influence is, is how I describe it. So really the aim is to build on the momentum that we've had in the US to date and try to establish that local presence serving clients at a kind of a closer distance and making sure that we're understanding the markets that are mostly interesting to them. And have you have you found any challenges uh, with regards to the U.S. healthcare system versus the Irish and UK? The challenges don't exist because I moved here, but they, they, but certainly the challenges we've always had is the complexity um, of the healthcare system here compared to single payer, you know, public systems like we have in Ireland or the UK. Um, in general, the ability to slice and dice services in the U.S. doesn't seem to amaze me, and none more so in healthcare, where the the yeah. number of actors that are involved in the delivery and administration of healthcare means that when you're thinking about digital solutions and innovations, the number of kind of stakeholders you have to consider in that is 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 just quite complex compared to some of the systems we have in Europe. Both have pros and cons, of course, and you know we might look at one and say that's a much better system, and vice versa. It's just different, and you know you really have to be here and experience it, not just from a, I suppose my my professional perspective, but now also as a summit living here, I go through the daily, well, thankfully not daily, but the experience of being a patient on occasion where I need to figure out and my cover for my insurance, what's the copay, where do I yeah. get access, how do I do that, and and that's all quite important. Uh, experiences as well that I can bring then back to our work. Uh, we work with several uh, global life science consultant groups, uh, Brian, uh, with a presence in in, in your space, um, particularly in, in in the kind of wearable device devices. Um, as lead uh, of the digital health strategy and innovation consulting team at S3 Connected, how do you differentiate your your offering in the market? So the consulting team that, that I'm part of, we're, we're focused on the upfront engagement with our pharma and medtech customers. So strategy, research, and design. And I think maybe not, well, you might argue the difference is or not, but my focus as part of kind of leading that team is let's get real about what we're trying to do here. It's not, you know, innovation theater for large corporations. It's about building solid foundations, understanding the business value that you're trying to create or that you need to maintain from a digital health perspective, couple that with a real 
realistic investment strategy and then go to the external world and really understand what's the problems you're going to solve as part of that and the value propositions you're creating so that you can bring a longevity to the investment and commitment. You know, too often what we've seen with digital health is that it's, 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 it's part of, you know, a PR or a year on year kind of marketing piece, but the commitment isn't there for a long term, you know, product market fit and, and changing the mindset. And so from our perspective, what I think is quite important is we're focused on, you know, really impactful definition of impactful solutions that have a strong rationale from a business perspective to invest in. And obviously a lot of the work that we do as a consulting arm of the business is proprietary and, you know, internal to our clients, but some of the external work that we've done is, you know, I'm very proud last year that a number of the team were lead authors on a peer reviewed publication in collaboration with RCSI in Dublin, looking at patient experiences on particular types of medications. Um, in this case, it was a pediatric medication as well. And so bringing a spotlight to some of the areas where digital can have an impact or innovations like patient services can have an impact on them as well. You know, more broadly, you know, but to bring sales as well, I, or at least what I think is important for us is you know, we're quite focused on ensuring that we're looking at the future, future generations of graduates, um, and actually trying to help influence that the, you know, the type of important attributes we see in digital health that are needed. So we participate with RCSI and some of their graduate programs, delivering lectures, support and curriculum development as well. Uh, we also do so with, with other universities in Ireland. And I think that's an important aspect to make sure that we keep in touch with kind of academia and then bring that to industry as well. I, I suppose that the, 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 um, um, the the go from academia to the real world. You know the you know, what's taught in in some of our colleges isn't uh, you know what we experience when we when we go into industry. So you know that's that's a that's a great uh, a, 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 a great relationship to, to to have and and to to promote. Brian, I, I've read the the recent white paper that you you offered uh, uh, regulated digital health solutions at Pharma's next success story. Um, I found it incredibly interesting. So well done. Um, uh, during our, our last Transatlantic Biotech Bridge episode uh, with uh, with Maureen Bennett, uh, Maureen and I discussed how uh, decentralized clinical trials have accelerated clinical development and the subsequent regulatory challenges associated. Uh, in, in the paper, you mentioned the adopt the adoption of digital health solutions uh, is still lagging in comparison to other areas. Um, what does a good digital health solution strategy look like? And what impact will the solution have on patient treatment and how will the solution enable better healthcare outcomes? So I, I kind of touched it on my previous answer where I talk about a strong rationale for investment with the right value proposition externally. But to expand a little bit on that, I mean, we need to be clear about how we're going to measure success at every point in the product development. And I say product, not project, because we need to move our mind, mindset from a project that starts here and hands off, hands off, hands off to more the product operating model where we have continuity in you know product ownership, product management to drive right through from conception to good product market fit and, and, and continuing on. And in line with that, you know, what are the KPIs? When, how will we know that we're, you know, on the path to success without kind of hoping that in, you know, in six months time, oh, adoption is right. So how do we set up a digital health strategy that clearly articulates the value we're trying to create for the different users that has a strategy that looks at the regulatory environment we're going to bring that solution into and be aware and be and not just aware, but consciously aware of the impact that will have on the business. If you're creating an unregulated or a regulated device, class one, class two, are you set up to do that? Do you need a partnership to enable that? And, you know, really try to remove as many of the last minute surprises that kills digital health solutions in large corporations as possible, but any other asset and create a business rationale for that investment in the same way. And when you think about what that can deliver, you know, I'll give you some examples in oncology where, you know, the, the hallmark of a good pharmaceutical is related to progression free survival or overall survival as well. And digital health, you know, there's published and peer reviewed evidence and, and solutions out there that that can actually contribute positively to progression-free survival uh, through, you know, facilitating engagements with the patients and the healthcare professionals. But I think, you know, when I know that we can go further than that, not just look at progression-free and, and overall survival, but actually look at quality of life on treatment, duration on treatment as well, and through digital interventions, make sure we can minimize the impact of side effects for that patient. We can maximize their quality of life uh, through engagement or drawing in com complementary services as well. So, you know, when we think about 
outcomes and healthcare outcomes, patient outcomes, we should be expanding our definition of what we expect from a pharmaceutical coupled with uh, digital health solutions and likewise from medtech uh, device, expand out and actually start to put an expectation on the market that we deliver quality of life, patient experience, in addition to kind of traditional healthcare healthcare measurements. So, so implementing quite a lot of um, clearly defined um, uh, measurable uh, yeah. points that, yeah, excellent, great, thank you for that. Um, now, now we've seen quite a lot of uh, life plans and biotech companies make uh, make uh, a transatlantic move uh, and set up shop in the US with varying degrees of success, uh, Brian. Um, navigating the complexities of establishing the US presence in the US uh, requires careful planning and understanding of the landscape. Uh, you're now coming up to one year in Boston, uh, I believe this month. Uh, do you have any advice for companies considering making the move stateside? I was very fortunate to land into Boston, both into an Irish community, but also a healthcare community where you kind of greet with open arms. Um, yeah. and, and, and that is one of the real advantages for me, from my viewpoint of coming into Boston, for example, you've got some fantastic organizations like Biba, who, who set up networking events, very, you know, informal, and you can start to meet people there as well. Uh, the other important point about, for me, when I reflected in the last year was less about the big events that I could now go to quite easily, obviously the ones that are in the convention center, the plaza, but actually the local intersection of healthcare, tech, life sciences means that pretty much on any day of the week, there's going to be a group of extremely interesting, extremely relevant people meeting in a much more smaller, intimate type setting. And if you can tap into that, it makes setting up and your experiences here much easier. And, and, and really the opportunity to learn and grow is, is, has been fantastic and is fantastic for those people. So my advice is kind of make sure that you're trying to tap into the local network, not just the, the big international lobbyist events that now just means you don't have to fly from Ireland to, because you know, you're not going to take advantage then of what's happening in this ecosystem and of Cambridge and Boston and all that goes with that as well. So, and that's, that's quite important. The other important thing that for me moving across is someone kind of in the senior position from S3 is that I readjust my day to make sure that I have time to actually then exploit the US and, and what, you know, Boston's offered as opposed to just doing the same job I did in Ireland, but here. So, you know, yeah. making sure in the second half of the day that you have time to go out and actually network, meet people, et cetera. Um, those are the advantages of here, and that's quite important to to focus on. So, so you're now a more you're now a naturalized Bostonian. Yeah, <laughs> I drop drop all my or ors on words and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, and, and the, probably the most important uh, question of of the day um, as we as we lead into the uh, the uh, the most important date in the Irish calendar. How are you going to be spending St Patrick's Day, Brian? First of all, Sean, what I've learned is it's not St. Patrick's Day, Day here, it's St. Patrick's Month. And in fact, the first <laughs> event happened just in the last day of February. So you have a calendar of events. But uh, next week, you know, we're fortunate enough and, and I'm fortunate enough to be invited to, I suppose, some of the events where we have the ministers coming over from Ireland. And, you know, one example was it's the Irish-American Partnership breakfast meeting that's happening uh, next week where the Taoiseach will speak at. Uh, I attended that last year, having just arrived two days earlier in, in Boston. And it's an amazing experience as somebody that, you know, is coming to a new country, particularly a size of America, to look at a room of 600 plus people all there because a small island off the coast of Europe can draw this type of audience. So there's that event on. There's some, you know, the Boston Irish Young Partnership event is on. Uh, again, the Tisha will speak at that. And, and then informally, there's so many different events happening. So there's um, some of the networking and, and and lunch events where I'll also try to attend. Uh, unofficially, or the unofficial events that'll happen is uh, uh, the um, a moved house there last week is to mark the first year and St. Patrick's Day Parade in South Boston will now pass my front window. So I'll get a chance to just sit at the kitchen table and watch what, you know, almost a that, three mile of, uh, of a parade. That, that's just amazing. It's crazy. You have to go to America to get that view. Yeah, exactly. I didn't have it in Dublin, so uh, yeah. I didn't have it here. <laughs> But it's brilliant. It's fantastic to see. Yeah. Well, well, Brian, I really appreciate your time and thank you very much. That was so insightful, and I'm sure our uh, our community will 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 enjoy that. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to meeting you in person the next time we're over in, in Boston. And um, you know, as I mentioned, we're we're going to run our our own uh, series of events. So it'd be great to have you and some of our other um, uh, partners uh, there in person. Thank you very much, Sean, for having me and for the work that you're doing to bring together this community as well, because there really is a fantastic 
group of people spread across um and i'm learning that you know new england that have got strong irish connections in the lifetime space so appreciate the opportunity thank you